The opinions, viewpoints, and beliefs presented on this program do not necessarily reflect those of the management, the affiliates, and broadcast partners, or the sponsors. Listener discretion is advised. Gapfest Radio, the radio you can see. And good evening, everyone, and welcome to ScareFest Television. I'm your host, Wes Forsyth, and tonight, joined by the lovely and talented CCN, we will be telling you about um, our speakers. I got a whole list here with my income tax information on the back of it. The, uh, because I am a responsible citizen of the earth, and I reuse paper. Um. Anyway, we yeah we got uh, our first round of speaker announcements, which is uh, fairly small, but uh, some that um, you'll be familiar with. We do have two really good celebrity announcements, and if we can't find anything else to bullshit about, I have a whole stack of uh, uh, news articles that uh, my my writing staff has been sending me that I haven't used for about thirty days. So we got stuff to talk about. Um. So, uh, let's go ahead and bring CC over. Uh, let's see here. Um, now, everyone, as far as the celebrity announcements that we will do at um, the half-hour mark, I want to apologize. Actually, I shouldn't apologize. Um, it wasn't my damn fault. One of the agents, we've got our paranormal celebrities ready. We've, we've sent out contracts for our first round of paranormal celebrities. and. We told the agent, we thought we'd have him by last weekend, but we didn't. So we told, told the agent, uh, can you get him to us? We're doing a radio gig. I think it was a, yesterday morning. Yeah. Uh, Nicole and Brandon were on the radio, a real radio, not internet stuff. And uh, so, oh, I missed the deadline, but I'll have him to you by the show Friday night. Well, she texted me 15 minutes ago, gave me permission to announce, but I don't have the paperwork in my hand, so I ain't doing it. Um... How you been, Cece? I'm good, Wes. How are you this lovely Friday? Evening? I am as busy as the proverbial one-armed wallpaper hanger, as they say. I figured as much. You've had your arm up a cow's behind all <laughs> At least days. one. Um, yeah, the uh, yeah the, <laughs> the farm has been uh, taking a lot of my time. It's spring. It's spring on the farm. What can you say? We've been seeding. We've been. I'm built right now. Building. I'm building a corral out back of the house. Ooh. So uh, so yeah, there's plenty going on there. But that's not what the people came to hear about. I'm sure. Um, let's go ahead. Uh, just go ahead. Now I don't have the grant. See, I didn't even get the graphics done for our speakers. I gotta do that. But these are people you all know. I could just do their show appearances. I could have done that. Because they've all been on the show in the last year. Uh, mm -hmm. Our first announcement, speaking at the Scarefest this year, is Alan Marston. Now, his topic this year, has the Green River Killer been dethroned as America's most prolific serial killer? Um... Ooh. Yeah, see now okay everybody now here here's a little little side story here. Alan knows that now he's a he's a paranormal guy. He's a ghost hunter. He he's a paranormal investigator, but Alan knows that our uh seminar staff find serial killers much more sexy than ghosts. So he talks about serial killers every year. It's to the ghost hunting. I just and I think I I applaud him for gaming the system. So there there there's that. Um I'm I'm wondering, I don't remember the guy's name, but they actually arrested him not long ago. He was I bet he's talking about there's a black man who has apparently just been absolutely solving the hell out of crimes. 
And I'm not even sure oh. they captured him. If they turned himself in, he got tired of killing people and they said, "Yep, I've been, I've been, uh, I've been killing people all over the country." And what? Uh, is, Alan's in the chat room. Alan, is that is I, that I, in I, fact what you will be speaking about? Is the guy uh, Samuel Little? I don't remember the guy's name. Uh, so, but is that the story? Is that am, am I on the right story, Alan? Uh, that. Uh, Basically, he just sits in jail. He they come and interview him about unsolved crimes, and he starts telling them, "Yep, I killed him, and here's where you found the body." And yeah, there was a handkerchief around their neck. And I see captured here in Louisville. Okay, he was captured. I <laughs> he's so nice. If it's a guy I'm thinking about in Kentucky, yeah, well, you know, stuff just tends to Kentucky has a connection to everything in the paranormal world, and apparently we are branching out now to serial killers. If it's a guy I'm thinking about when he uh, turned himself in or when he got captured, but anyway, he cooperated, and he's like, he's just so nonchalant about it. He just just sits there kind of proud of himself. Did this, did this guy just like walk into the police station and be like, hey, I think you guys are looking um, for no. me? Or I well, Alan in the chat room says that he was captured. And of course, yeah. He was and, captured. And, okay, so he Yeah, was he was caught. caught. Probably for like some bullshit tax evasion thing. That's how we do it in America. Um, <laughs> but anyway, uh, so uh, that's. Uh, we got three of these. We'll do one every fifteen minutes. So we'll get we'll get to figure out how to stretch Alan out for a uh, for another five minutes here. Um, I will take a moment to tell everybody now. Of course, this is not all of the uh, speakers, but um, we uh, we will still accept um applications up until. Well, well into the summer until we get our, we don't, we can't have as many as usual. So we get to be a little pickier this year than we are sometimes. Let's see. He... Do you guys have a lot of serial killers in Kentucky? Well, I'm, I'm sure, I don't know. I guess we're average. I don't know. They, they, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm up here in Baltimore, so we don't have a whole lot of serial killers per se we have killers but we don't have a whole lot of serial killing so you're on. saying we're just a little more ambitious in kentucky than you are out on the east coast well, I can't, uh, <laughs> our killers like to have <laughs> eggs and bacon for breakfast instead the, what's that have to do with anything um <laughs> that was funny. That was funny. the um uh, well i mean what is it they say that you'll meet You'll meet 50, what is it, is it is the number 50? They say in your lifetime, you will actually, dis, or not meet, but actually randomly pass, I think it's like 50 serial killers. Really? I, you know, working in mental health, I'm not that surprised. Of course, I, you know, that's also, you know, they don't all get caught, um, obviously. Right. But yeah, that's, and I, I, <laughs> I'll put it this way. Up until last year on Facebook, I might have said, oh, that number's a little high. But nope, uh, after last year, I anything that um, speaks to the denigration of society, I'm like, hell yeah. Let's see. Um, oh, please. Okay, we, we, we've talked about Alan. Everybody, uh, of course, now Alan is a very popular speaker at the Scarefest. That's why he gets... He gets proved, but I do love that he he doesn't even try to talk about paranormal stuff. Um, the um, what what have we been watching on TV lately? You and I. Everybody in the chat room, <laughs> speak up. What have you guys been watching? I'll tell you what I watched. I watched them. Has anybody else watched them? They have been talking about it a lot online. I have not watched it yet. For one thing, I'm almost, it's, I don't know the entire concept, but it's a series and I'm trying to find movies to watch. My, my attention span is getting shorter and, uh, and yeah, it was about eight to 10, you know, long. Um, but, but all of them, except for maybe like one of the last, last one or two got a little, little strange but the rest of them were, were amazing it talks about a lot of racial disparity and had a lot of horror theme to it 
um, and you know how you can find horror in just regular suburbia and and you know the things that people do to each other are just still so nasty um, but still had that super supernatural twist to it which was really amazing the uh, see now I yeah. I got hooked up for a while and this actually is just right down the seminar speakers alley I got into all these people that Netflix is doing documentaries on that have been falsely accused of crimes or not, if not falsely Ooh, not their trials were bullshit. I'll put it that way. Even if they did it. Yeah. And uh, finally, one day about two, three weeks ago, Anita says, you're depressing the hell out of me. Can we watch something else? So I had to stop. Mm. Watch a comedy, please. So, <laughs> and uh, I tried watching that. Um, What's it called? It's one. It's. Well, actually, they got two different Sherlock Holmes series on Netflix right now. The uh, Enola Holmes is one, and the other one is about a bunch of kids and Do and Doctor Watson, and neither one of them have grabbed me. We need to, Netflix needs to get some damn good movies out because their series. I think they're just coasting now. I'm waiting for the sequel to The Dark Crystal. I mean, come on. They did that really good series. You know, I'm not a series girl, but I watched that one and I loved it. And I thought another one was coming out to, you know, be the prequel up to the movie. And then nothing. Anybody know if they're working on that? <laughs> Let me go through my news notes. Hell, I might even have a story on it here. Um, I, uh. Yeah, there was that. Oh, and, I, and of course, now the other thing, and this pisses me off because it, Disney, if I had known Disney was going to run all their series on Friday nights or on Fridays, um, I'd have wrote a very strongly worded letter to the management. Um, I just got oh. done with, uh, of course, last, I guess it was just last week, Falcon Winter Soldier. And someone in chat room probably knows what's mm -hmm. up next. I don't know. It might be Loki. But uh, Falcon, Falcon, and of course, you know, I love superhero stuff. And uh, I, it was movie quality, but it wasn't, I just didn't feel like it was snappy enough. I, I, I want, oh. I want snappy. And, you know, yeah. I like Mandalorian, that was Ooh, snappy. You should come up with this. Do you have a um, a superhero um, persona that you do? <laughs> the only one I ever toyed with, but I decided it was too far above everybody's head, was uh, I was going to, and this was actually before COVID also, Social Justice Warrior. The Social Justice W-O-R-R-I-E-R? No, I was, uh, don't, the Kentucky accent... <laughs> But anyway, no, a warrior. Yeah, warrior. Okay, I, I hear you. The the um, yeah, and the concept behind it was that he shouts everything that he says, and uh, and, you know, but he's you know the as far as the costume, it's basically Captain Sweatpants. You know, it's because he sits in his mom's basement all day. You know, carry you know have his little keyboard carrying it around. I really thought about doing that, but I'm not doing enough cons yet to really expand my. You know, I've still got some that haven't premiered at a convention yet. But yeah, I, that's my only superhero. Oh, and I had one more that you will like, though. Um, we've uh, uh, we've got a friend who does a really good Wolverine. Okay, he's you Ooh. know he sh he shaves his beard down to the uh, the Love lamb it. chops oh, and man. or mutton chops <laughs> and lamb chops. That was a little sock of it. Um, <laughs> mutton chops, and uh, and he and, and he looks apart. He's Physically big, uh, as in not as fat assed as I am. But I was talking to him one day, and we were, and I was doing cosplay. I think I was bad Santa when we were talking, so he, we we had we had that connection. But I have been toying around with doing because I do really bad tarot, really bad Santa. I thought about doing really old Logan, you know, oh. and uh, the. <laughs> The the sight gag everyone would be I I want to I would borrow a walker or not borrow you'd have to give it to me because I'm gonna tear the shit up but get a walker and cut it 
and then where are the claws? And then every time I'd grab the walker, see, it would fall in half because, you know. <laughs> but, okay, so but, it. Oh, but we're, we're, you know, we're, we're the tank top. Right through the metal. The, uh, the only drawback is to do it right now, I'd have to shave my mustache, you know, down to mutton chops. The regulars, that was the name of the series. The older I Logan has a mustache. Hmm? Maybe the older Logan has a no, mustache. You, no, to do, no, no. Okay, let's be, let's get a little bit of our purity going here to do wolverine to do logan you gotta do mutton chops and you, you, you got to yeah. okay and so <laughs> we wasted five minutes um everybody we're, we're <laughs> going to take our first commercial break when we come back we will have another speaker announcement for you on scarefest tv we'll be right back <laughs> Mama Ruby offers fun vendor-based events that focus primarily on the metaphysical and spiritual aspects of our lives. Well, 2020 didn't go as planned, to say the least. Since Mama Ruby's can't bring the vendors to you in person, they still encourage you to support them online. <laughs> links to these and other outstanding artists, craftspeople, vendors, and psychics, visit MamaRubies.com and click shop. Come visit the Universal Energy Expo, May 1st and 2nd at the Northern Kentucky Convention Center. Meet special guests, Shaman Coyote Chris Sutton and Psychic Southern Gypsies. Over 100 readers, healers, and vendors. Admission also includes door prizes, workshops, and all seminars. The Universal Energy Expo. Come curious. Leave enlightened. I love that we go live right when Cece bends over and makes noise. Um... Now, before we get to our speaker announcement, now one thing I did have on my notes that I need to make a public announcement about. Um, first of all, to all the people, Sharon Sutton, who asked if this was a real show tonight or whatever the hell she asked. <laughs> Off the cuff is the word she used. Um, we do, the, every year when we do our celebrity, or our speaker announcements, we devote a show to it. Okay? Now, that being said, uh, the other thing is, I want What's that? This oh yeah, is this, is it. this is it. We we were this is really unscripted every week, whether you believe it or not. Now the other thing I want to point out to everybody on Facebook, in particular the admins of the Scarefest group, quit asking me why things do not work. I know nothing about Facebook. Um, apparently in their updates, we've been having trouble posting as the Scarefest into the Facebook fan group. We can share stuff from our own page, but I've had two different people today text me and say, why isn't this working? And I'm like, yeah, I don't know. So I just wanted to say that. And the other thing is if we get one more, and this is not actually, I haven't seen them going to Facebook. They've been coming to our personal text messaging. Are we going to have to wear mask at the Scarefest? Probably. Well, my answer is ask the damn governor. I got no damned idea. They have it, you know. Right. If uh, if you if everyone will get their shots, the answer is no. If you if you foot draggers draw this shit out, then yes, we will have to. So that's the answer. But the truth of the matter, I don't know. We don't know how many people are going to be allowed in the. We don't know. So I thought that would be now. I'll up here, they just took away. You don't have to wear a mask outside or for outside dining or anything like that anymore. Like so any, like anybody like was wearing a goddamn mask outside anyway. They were, they were most of the. Uh, <laughs> not in Kentucky, but it didn't make much sense. 
you would walk into a restaurant yeah. wearing your mask and you would go over to your table and you would take your mask off and you would interact with people and then you would put your mask on to go to the bathroom and then you would come back out with your and take your mask off. It was well, that, mm, yeah, but how much was it really protecting? Well, yeah, that that being that being said, I want to know why. For the last year, I've heard, listen to science, listen to science, and the six-foot social distancing. Well, when the CDC comes out and says, oh, by the way, we meant to say three-foot, nobody's changed anything. It's still six-foot. Oh, really? Yes. You do. My God, am I the only person no. that watches the 6 o'clock news? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, you are. We're all watching. Okay. Here, you know? Yeah. The the uh, it was either WHO or the WHO or the CDC said. The CDC. Okay, we might have overshot the mark a little bit. Come to find out, three foot is just as safe as six foot. Yeah, three foot is like droplet precautions, and that's what we're watching yeah. out for, right? This isn't really carried on the yeah. air. Yeah. And apparently, if you're actually sitting in a restaurant, it doesn't matter if you're only two of you in the entire building. If it gets up in the air conditioning, it's going to spit it all over you anyway. So it really doesn't matter. So. Well, Chad doesn't want to wear pants. So I don't know if there's going to be a restriction on that. We don't actually have a pants rule. The cosplay makes that painfully <laughs> obvious. Um, now, for the record, I've been asked about this before. Yes, I would wear a kilt to Scarefest, but only if I have an authentic kilt and not that little bullshit mini skirt that I wore at a Halloween party like six years ago. <laughs> I'll put Sorry, it this way. I, I was that. pigtails away from these going as, you know, sexy school girl. That uh, pretty much is where it was. Okay. All that to lead up to our next speaker announcement. And you will remember her from Scarefest TV, except Cece, who obviously didn't watch that episode. Tanya Webb. Tanya Webb will be speaking about our abandoned hospitals really haunted the story of the old hospital on College Hill. And my answer is yes, and the ones that are not abandoned are also haunted. Every nurse that I've ever spoken to has a ghost story. Period. I mean, how could they not be? All that energy there that's, you know, how, how could it not have something going the, uh, on? The, uh, thank you. And I don't know who, okay, I'm going to give, I might be giving him credit for a theory that he didn't pop up with originally, but David Roundtree and I were talking about it. And our thesis is, that every time a life comes into this world or a life leaves this world, there's a little prick in the veil. In other words, they got to have a hole to go home, to come here, whatever. However it works, as the souls go back and forth, they make a little hole in the veil. Well, these holes kind of coalesce because at a hospital, like you're talking about, people live, people, you know, people are born, they die constantly, just constantly. And it does create a, a, a very fruitful location for paranormal activity that's not even necessarily tied to the hospital. So. Yeah, it makes sense. Have I? And my gosh, the stuff that, you know, after all these COVID deaths, things should really be kicking up. I mean, we haven't had things like this since, you know, the old tuberculosis outbreaks and things like that, where you have so many people dying in the hospital at one time. They, um, so. yeah, because now that, that, now, okay, now here, this is me backing off of something I, I, I was not a conspiracy theory, but I was not convinced that our death rate overall, that, you know, how many people died, I wasn't convinced it would jump. But apparently it did. Mm. Yeah. It did. So I was, because I was, I was one of the people that was convinced that if you had a car wreck and they caught and they saw your nose was running, they just wrote COVID on it and went on. I'm sorry. I was because I had enough people tell me that my mom has been diagnosed with stage four cancer and already had hospice mm. and then she died and they covid on the death certificate and i and that story did that. pop up quite a few times just saying yeah so uh but once again the death rate did actually go up so i'm convinced now on the abandoned hospitals uh tanya webb she's the owner of the old hospital on college hill which is located in williamson west virginia uh she was <laughs> i read this too fast tanya you'd have really wanted with my ass 
She was uh, born in the hospital, which is nearly 100 years old. Now, I almost read that as saying she was born nearly 100 years ago in the hospital. Uh, I was actually born in this hosp in this nearly 100-year-old hospital in 1973. Now, she told everybody her age. Um, still a puppy. She lost two grandparents that she never got the opportunity to meet. They died in the hospital, so... Uh, so anyway, she uh, we did it. She was go back through the Scarefest archives. That's one that's actually online, and you can see that um, she uh, they're fixing it up. They're not doing, I believe. Now they some of the videos online are of the haunted house that they've done, but as they fix it up, they're phasing that out. In words, it will it'll be for tours for ghost hunts, but um, but not the not like haunted yeah. house. Yeah, like, like, well, Waverly Hills does every year, uh, which I understand why Waverly Hills does it. Uh, don't get me, don't, I don't want uh, uh, shitty emails about it. It, you know, it does produce a lot of money and places. I was going to say, it's got to yeah, be a money maker. A place like that takes a lot of money to, to keep up. But they are yeah. trying to go with the history aspect of it and, and really preserve it. Plus, now they're starting from a better place. The place was not empty that long. Um, in other words, it's not run down. There's a few broken windows I noticed. But I didn't see all the graffiti and everything inside in the pictures that I saw. But um, she was uh, very interesting on the show, and I think it'll be a very interesting seminar. This will be her first time presenting at the Scarefest, so everybody support her. But that is Tanya Webb. Yeah. Are abandoned hospitals really haunted? The story of the old hospital on College Hill. And right next to it's the old nurses' hospital that they haven't opened to the public yet. That'll be a whole nother seminar. Wow, that sounds exciting. But um, but yeah, I back to the, my original point. We somehow we we know a lot of nurses. I don't know why because you know health nut like me. Why wouldn't I? Uh, yeah. But they all all of them work that have worked in hospitals. Of do what? Of course. Yeah, you're sitting that's what there I'm with saying. Your <laughs> <laughs> and probably your bottle of whiskey behind Actually, you. Actually, there's one over there. Yep, that was uh, from one of our Saturday night <laughs> Zoom meetings. I'm sure that was Anita. <laughs> she was in bed already. <laughs> yes. <laughs> which is where I should have been. The What was I even going to talk about before you get me on that? <laughs> um, the Oh, <laughs> whatever... And I'll be one of these people. Everybody, now, when I die, here's going to be the running joke. When when I pass away, I want every one of you, you all to say, oh, my God, what happened? And then whoever they ask, I want you to say, oh, he wrecked his hog at bike week. Because I will die of a heart attack walking okay. to the mailbox. That, <laughs> that is. You'll probably outlive us all. Only if the... Uh, if I can kill the zombies quicker. That's the only way I see that happening at this point in my life. And I won't be running from them, that's for sure, because um, the 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 old sciatica is starting to slow me down a little, as we like to say. Um, oh, and I do have one, one point. Um, we'll be talking about it after the 30-minute uh, break here in just a moment. But next weekend, I will be at the uh, Central Kentucky Mystical Market. I will be there all weekend. I will have the Lost Year t-shirt, so if you've been putting off uh, ordering a t-shirt because you don't want to pay shipping, it's your chance. Go to Lexington, you can pick the bitch up. We're going to have them all there. Um, but this will be, you only have one more week of the glorious winter beard. Yes. Whatever shall we do? I don't know. I, I'm, I've already actually had it. This is the longest or fullest I've ever gotten it. And I've had it longer, but I never have let it get all puffy. And uh, so now I'm actually beginning. It's an impressive I'm beard. beginning. It makes a statement. <laughs> I'm too lazy to shave. I like, how, I like how the V follows the V of your shirt. It's very symmetrical. So, so, so you're saying if I want to have a round, when I go, when I shave it down to where it's round, then I need to actually wear turtlenecks then. Maybe, yeah. Yeah, I worked very hard. The only thing, I, I don't know if you can see it on camera. I got this little curl that comes out, and it, 
In other words, it does a little devil spike on the end, which is not the look I'm going for. It's cute. But, uh, but yeah, that's uh, I, I this is my glorious winter beard, and I do it every winter because I'm just too lazy to shave. And uh, but I, it's too hot in the summertime. I think when you cut it off, you should glue it to your chest. Yeah, like I need more coverage there. Thank you, everybody. That's a good spot for a commercial <laughs> break. Everybody, we'll be right back with more Scarefist TV. Hey, when we come back, we're dropping names for two Scarefest headliners. Horror. Movie. Fan. Four. Life. On Facebook. Find us. Four watch parties. Four news. Four memes. Four friends. Four life. Horror movie fans for life. Join us. Everyone is talking about CBD oil. Most of us know that CBD is a cannabis compound that has significant medical benefits but does not make people high. Its benefits include pain relief, anti-seizure properties, anxiety relief, fights cancer, reduces the risk of diabetes, and it is even used as a sleep aid. Blue Leaf Naturals CBD and hemp products are full spectrum hemp extract oils. They use only hemp grown in Kentucky, supporting Kentucky farmers and businesses and helping you and your family stay healthy and well. Blue Leaf Naturals, created with care from seed to shelf. Visit their website at blueleafnaturals.com. Blue Leaf Naturals, a Kentucky proud company. And welcome oh. back, everybody, to Scarefest Television. It is time for our announcements. Our first big announcement of the evening, and if I had my drum roll programmed in the computer like I used to, I'd play it now. <laughs> Mr. Bruce Campbell is coming back to the Scarefest. Mr. Bruce Campbell is our headliner for Scarefest 2021. And, I, and I've decided that everybody, you can actually thank Cece for this because every time she comes to Scarefest, he's a headliner. I've done, I've done the math. I've done the math. So anyway, Bruce Campbell, uh, uh, Evil Dead, all, all that has to be said. Although Bubba Hotep, I have to admit, was a much better movie than I anticipated when I started watching it. Uh, <laughs> but I still, uh, Burn Notice. I'm sorry, Burn Notice is his best work ever. Fight me. Now, Ted Ramey. Ted Ramey. Now, the last time he had to bow out at the last moment, Ted Ramey, but we have all assurances that he's good to go this time. So, Ted Ramey will be um, bookending with Bruce Campbell because if you go through IMDb, IMDb and look at Bruce Campbell's movies, Ted's always there. Ted does a lot of stuff without Bruce, but apparently Bruce can't do anything without Ted. The uh, uh, that's our announcements for tonight. Ted Ramey, Bruce Campbell, and next week we'll have more. Get your tickets now. TheScarefest.com tickets are on sale. Go to TheScarefest.com, click the ticket link, and while you're there, pick you one up to throw axes with killers. We have our axe throwing event on sale, and I gotta go through my text messages because I'm pretty sure I've got one more celebrity that I've not added. Uh, but anyway, so we got plenty of celebrities. Uh, I haven't even checked the ticket sales. Make sure that we're keeping up because we have to do a nine. <gasps> Rob Mello? Yes. Woo! Nine to one ratio. In other words, for every nine tickets we sell, we got to add a celebrity until we run out of room. We run out of axes. 
Next weekend, Central Kentucky Mystical Market. Central Kentucky Mystical Market at the Clarion on Newtown Pike. Saturday and Sunday, go to centralkymysticalmarket.com. I will be appearing as Captain Jack Rabbit next week. Captain Jack Rabbit will be there for your um, photo op opportunities. What is it's a photo op because it's actually a photo opportunity, so it's saying photo op opportunity is kind of redundant anyway. Speaker applications now, we are still going to be taking speaker applications until the um, the powers that be, as in Amber Truax, tells me stop taking speaker applications. But they are on thescarefest.com. You can still apply to speak once again. The inside track is talk about death, murder, um, that kind of stuff. To get in as Ghost Hunter, you got to be really, really good. Film Festival entries are open. Film Festival entries are open right now. We are still taking film, and we've gotten somewhere right now. We're in the neighborhood, I think, of uh, last time I checked, uh, about 20, 25 entries. Uh, so we're, we're, we're well on our way to have a full film festival. we got to do the math on it to even figure out how many we can have. But the... Um, the film festival entries are open. You can go to the link on the banner or you can just go to the Scarefest and click the film festival entry. Scarefest gift shop. I realize nobody's going to buy anything this week because all the stuff will be at the mystical market next weekend. But, so, and, and don't be emailing me saying, oh, bring so and so. If I got it, I'm bringing it. I'm going to try to, might even run a sale. Might even run a sale because sweatshirts, we got a bunch of sweatshirts left and. I think they're going to slow down. And finally, I want to mention the Universal Energy Expo, May 1st and 2nd, this weekend, tomorrow and Sunday. Uh, these are great people. They actually invited me. They had me a table and everything. I have to do farm stuff and cannot make it. I'll be lucky to make it through the farm stuff with uh, back to that old dropping dead on the way to the mailbox thing. But our former co-host, Christopher Sutton, Cody Chris Sutton will be there. Uh, the Connor sisters will be there, Southern Gypsies. So that is uh, Universal Energy Expo. I would suggest just uh, putting it in on Facebook. They do a lot of uh, their news is all on their Facebook page. They've got a website, but it's easier just to uh, put Universal Energy Expo in Covington up on Facebook. Check them out May 1st and 2nd. Wish I could be there with you. Matter of fact, one of my old high school buddies thought I was coming. Because I'm still on the list of people coming. And I had to break her heart. Oh, well. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, the spirit mechanics will be there. And it's just as good as me. Especially with my son being there. Steve Smith. What was your mom's maiden name, Steve? This might, We might even not even be faking this. You might actually know. <coughs> because I was less than pure in my younger years. <laughs> Um, they posted a picture today on, a uh, on, on the group. I think it was, uh, the ax throwing event we had two years ago and nobody, I was waiting for somebody to say, well, where was Wes? And I was going to say, I was recruiting a new co-host. I was drunk in a bar <laughs> recruiting, <laughs> recruiting a new co-host. But anyway, um, okay. Now that's, that's what we got going on. And especially the part about Bruce Campbell's coming to Scarefest. Well, the main thing, I think our, I think our main thing was, well, we've got a building that's actually big enough to house his line this time. So, um, although his, now he did pretty good. His line, they kept it moving. He's really good with people. All the reports are, oh my God, he's so great. Mm -hmm. But keep the line moving. He looked amazing. He what? Like I want to know what you expected. You told me that before the show. With his, I don't know. I expected him to show up kind of a little bit more like in costume or something. And he walked in like he was right off the Hollywood sign or something. And I was like, oh, my God. Bruce. Well, ex except, oh, except for Ash versus the Evil Dead in those movies. He's always dressed nice. I mean, 
He's a. I know. I guess I was kind of. Well, I would have liked to have seen like the jeans with the with the boomstick with no shirt on. That could have worked for me too. Right, Maybe baby? anybody out there. And for Bruce I, Campbell, I think I've got his agent's email address. I will suggest that for a photo op for you. But if, if Bruce would be so kind to wear wear a chainsaw and no Please. shirt, that uh, CC would yeah. buy a photo op. We would appreciate the, that. He uh, see the only things now he I'm I guess I knew he was a tall guy, and he's one of the few that actually lived up to my expectations because most of these Hollywood stars, when you actually meet them, they're like my height, you know, or shorter. You know, not not as dumpy as I am necessarily, but no, he, he's a, he's a good looking. Uh, he is. He was very handsome. I expected him to look older. I don't know. I think I think he's maybe been keeping things tight. <laughs> yeah, he. I think he's keep, keeping his, maybe his maybe it's good clean living. Maybe he moisturizes. Yeah, Unlike me, who just treats my entire body like an old ball glove that's you know laying out in the yard. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, you know, some of these Hollywood people take care of themselves, and he could easily be one of them. Anyway, let's. Uh, okay, we got five minutes. That'll be enough time to do this. One of. Okay, now would. Uh, we have one more speaker to right. talk about, right? And she was. Yes, she we do. was one of our uh, most popular psychic greetings at the Scarefest Radio after party. Beverly McChesney. Actually, she was the most popular. Uh, Beverly McChesney will be doing her Answers from the Universe channeled messages. Now, to set you all up for this, what she does... Now, it's funny. I'm, I've only seen her do it virtually because I'm just never there when she does it in her seminar. But everybody in the room gets a chance to ask a question. Or maybe not everybody, depending on if you got a hundred people and she's there for forty five minutes, may not work out. But what my point is, she will take questions and basically the universe will give you answers. And she channels angels, spirit guides, whoever has the answers that you're seeking. And we got to see it in the virtual thing. And I mean it's 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 really neat. And you can ask her just damn near anything. If it's if you're willing to go there. She will, she will. She will meet, meet you. you there. Uh, in other words, if, uh, personal okay. questions or uh, more. I think one of her big ones is pe people love asking her about aliens. Yeah, really? that's the popular topic. Apparently, what what do you not want to know about what aliens? Do ask, what do they ask about aliens? What question about aliens would someone? Well, ask? you could ask. Uh, are we going to find out about? Officially find out about aliens. Are aliens visiting us? Are the lizard people in charge? Stuff like that. Okay. And the answer is yes, yes, and yes. There's a lizard in my flower what? box. There's a lizard in my flower yeah. box. You could be a lizard person. He's not you charge. could be a lizard person. <laughs> I would never know. You know what? I watched Cat People the other night. Like the old... 50s version. That was good. Cat people. Cat people. You know, the woman thought she was a cat, a panther, and she got married to this guy, but she couldn't kiss him because if she kissed him, she would kill and turn him to a panther and kill him. Hmm. I miss. And then I watched Curse of the Cat People, where she comes back and she's dead. These are scary. Well, I, watch, I, watch, watch. I mean, I've watched the Stephen King version of it. Uh, whatever it was. Oh, that's different. You're talking about Cat's Eye. I'm not. Where it was like a couple short no. stories. He did a movie. No, Everybody in the chat room, what's the um, what's the Stephen King movie with the cat family? Are you talking about Skinwalkers? I, I think. That wasn't about. What do you mean it wasn't? They were cat people. They were something like that, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely. They were something. They wore definitely cat makeup. Cat. That's yeah. close enough. Something like that. Did yeah, you all hear you. her? Okay, something it. like that. Yeah, no, that was cat people. Okay. Mm. If you, if Whatever. You Whatever you say. Pop. <laughs> you know, the, 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 did you ever see the alternate ending for the movie? How they caught him? They laid a, bo they laid a no. box out in the yard. 
Everybody, we're going to take our last commercial break of the hour, and we'll be back with more bullshit. This is Scarefest TV. TellMeTarot.com Rare tarot and oracle decks for the discerning enthusiast or collector. Our decks are not for everyone. If you are a rare deck collector, art collector, or simply fall in love with a deck, then we might be for you. Right now, get 10% off your first order just for subscribing to their newsletter. Shipping is just $5.99 in the United States. TellMeTarot.com Spirit Mechanics is here to help. Their background includes many different specialties across the metaphysical spectrum, including alchemy, shamanism, Celtic witchcraft, angelic magic, astral travel, and more. With over 30 years combined experience in the group, you can be confident in their ability to help. If there is a question you have that you cannot answer, they will do their best to assist you. Metaphysics can be intimidating, confusing, and unfortunately, abused. Spirit Mechanics takes pride in being selfless in the pursuit of helping others, being humble and honest with their clients about their questions, and lastly maintaining a professional and personable atmosphere. They want you to feel as you are coming to a close friend and they will do everything in their power to make you comfortable and safe. Hey, Scarefist, this is Joe Lewis of Bowen Head Weekly. This week, we want to take a time machine, and we're going to go back a little bit. 1989 gave us Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, UHF, Ghostbusters 2, Batman. I could just go on and on and on. We did a Bonehead episode about it. But what I find fascinating, and this has happened several times throughout Hollywood, is that there were competing pictures, you know, movies out there that dealt with the subject of being underwater. Now, we've done that later in the 90s. It was uh, Dante's Peak and Volcano, dealing with volcanoes erupting. But this time, there were three movies, and they all came out in 89. One in January, one in March, and the other one in June, July. One of them was really famous. It's The Abyss. It's Cameron's. It, it, August. I'm sorry. It came out in August. And most of you know about The Abyss. There's Abyss aliens living at it. it's not so much a terror picture but the other two are the first one was in january and it's directed by sean cunningham and it's about these navy people who are down below setting up nuclear missiles and it's called deep star six and sean cunningham gave us friday the 13th he directed the original produced a bunch of the sequels deep star six is it good it's okay it has some scenes in it i like the monster is okay as long as you don't really see it too much but it has Greg Evigan, one of my favorite character actors of all kind, time, Miguel Ferrar. Should you see it? The cool thing about these movies are that they're, they're all, if you have Prime, they're all available on Prime. You can watch them on Prime. Deep Star Six is a lot of fun. I have fond memories of it. It's not a good movie in any way, shape, or form. But it's got a monster. It's underwater. It's not as good as Underwater, which I've talked about on here before. Underwater is better than all three of these movies. But it's Underwater. So if you like Underwater, Monster, check it out. The other one, my favorite, The Abyss is the best film out of these three, but my favorite is Leviathan. Leviathan came out in March. Once again, all these underwater movies all came in without seven or eight months of one another. It's directed by George P. Cosmostos. Now, he's now passed on. His son, Pan, is a fantastic director. If you've ever seen the Nicolas Cage movie, Mandy made that. He also went on to make Tombstone and a great movie called A Runaway Train. And this is written by David Peoples. David Peoples wrote Unforgiven and also worked on Blade Runner, Leviathan. Now, this one's got an all-star cast. All these ki- all these guys and gals are stuck at the ocean. They're drillers. They're for natural resources, oil, whatever. It's got Peter Weller, Richard Crenna, Daniel Stern, Ernie Hudson from Ghostbusters, Hector Elizondo, Meg Foster from They Live, Evil Lynn 
from from Masters of the Universe, the one with the great eyes. She's been at Scarefest before. And they find this submarine. It's a Soviet submarine. And they sneak out vodka. Uh, they found some vodka. They're not supposed to drink it. A couple of them drink it. And a bunch of them drink it. It basically has this creature that turns into a monster and mutates. And the problem with this movie has got an all-star cast. Like I said, Peter Weller is one of my favorite actors. He was RoboCop. It has real pedigree when it comes to the writing. The director is a known filmmaker who's made a couple really good movies but the monster sucks <laughs> and it's hard to explain the monster it's hard for me to explain the monster it's a mutant creature that starts with people and then kind of builds from it, it never quite explains it it just the monster sucks so should you check out leviathan yes i love leviathan even though i know it is an extremely flawed movie but I really have a special place in my heart. Plus, it's got the coolest name. Actually, out of the Abyss, Deep Star 6 and Leviathan. Leviathan is the coolest name. Deep Star 6 is second coolest because Deep Star 6 is also a cool name. Actually, the Abyss is the least cool name out of all of these. So check out Leviathan if you like underwater movies. Actually, underwater, once again, underwater, best underwater film. This has been Joe Lewis of Bonehead Weekly. Thanks for time traveling with me. And welcome back, everybody, to Scarefest Television. Uh, we got 10 more minutes or so to, to uh, throw away with our lives. 10 minutes, we'll never get back. We'll never get back. Uh, but so far, we've got Beverly McChesney, Alan Marston, and Tanya Webb. Those are our three of our keynote speakers for the Scarefest. Um, then, of course, we announced Bruce Campbell and Ted Ramey. The... Uh, I, I, I am impressed in the chat room. They're actually following the conversation they've been keeping up. And yes, the movie was not Skinwalkers. It was Sleepwalkers. We were corrected on that. Yes, and um, the, uh, I still think the, the box comment was pretty, pretty damn funny. Um, I'm trying to think, what, what was the last actual, oh, what was the last movie I watched? I don't even know. I have not watched... I haven't been watching any horror because we're re I've kind of slacked off. I'm waiting to hear back from two different horror celebrities, one of which was supposed to do the show last month. And, uh, uh, -oh. uh <laughs> she, I think she's muted my text messages, but, um, we did, we had actually another one though, actually uh, is excited about coming on. I'm waiting to hear from Nicole. Uh, she's setting that up for me. But we do, we do, we will get back in the groove on getting celebrities on here. But what I do is I'm getting the habit when I've got a celebrity booked. That's when I watch horror. So I've got something to talk about it for the hour, unlike now. Uh, but because when you're when you don't have a celebrity coming on, you're watching superheroes. For the most part, I even rewatched. Um, was it Civil War a week or two back? I couldn't help it. Disney oh. Disney kept uh, Captain America's Civil War. Uh, Disney kept suggesting it because I was watching um, Falcon Winter Soldier, and so they they. they oh, soldier. Well, no, it's, no, no, no. It's because it's they're tied. You haven't watched any of that, have you? I dabble <laughs> a little bit. You know, I watched the first Wonder Woman. I wasn't impressed. Um, I wasn't yeah. impressed with Wonder. Now, Wonder Woman, the first movie, I thought it was overrated, but it was I, it was good. Uh, that that's my it was good. that's my movie review. You know, I remember I remember being like fourteen or fifteen years old and being the supermarket, and they were doing some kind of thing where you could fill out a little form and put it in the box, and maybe you would be the next Wonder Woman in the Wonder Woman movie. <laughs> And then it didn't come out until like just a couple of years ago. So I don't know what took them so long. What were they doing? Well, I guess they were going going, going through entries, I guess. Um, <laughs> when you write them on a box top, it takes a while to sort that shit. The, um, now, the second one, honestly, and I think this is a popular, pretty, and this is nothing controversial. It sucked ass. Oh, no, it, it sucked ass. It? it was awful. It was beginning to end. I'm not saying it didn't have good, cool parts. Yeah. But <laughs> that really wasn't where I was going with that. No, I mean, there were parts of it that were enjoyable, but I... You mean she has yeah, cool uh, parts. Yeah, that's... 
Oh, uh, that's what that—that that was the double entendre that I threw in as an afterthought. <laughs> but no, actually, I—you know, in other words, I didn't hate the experience, but it was one of those uh, when I walked out of the theater, I was like, me, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah. Tra Tracy Courtney, uh, she in the chat room, she caught that I would take the conversation to boobs as soon as we start talking about Wonder Woman. Wait, I'm I'm the usual one that turns turns it to boobs, don't I? Isn't that my thing? That's my shtick. <laughs> I was me. doing this when you were still in knee pants, dear. <laughs> <laughs> the um, let's see, uh. Wait, we've already talked about Chad with no pants on. Now we're talking about gal's boobs. Here we go. Well, you know. There it is. Susan's like, there it is. You gotta push the envelope. <laughs> you got you gotta you gotta rise above the competition. Uh the worst thing is now now I'm really distracted and I don't remember. I actually had another uh superhero movie that I was gonna mention. Um, of course, I'm too cheap to get HBO to add to my list of tax deductible. Boy, if I ever get audited, they're gonna they're gonna question that shit, and I'm about to say, well, you know, they pay me to do this. Um, but True. that's the, my story, and I'm gonna True. stick to it. And I mean, I love, like the mainstream ones. I like Iron Man. Name some other ones. I like. Well, the movies. Well, the uh, Captain America had three movies. I like the Captain America movies. Okay. Well, so you're just not into the Disney series then? So you had, because yeah, after no, the fact, you had one, uh, WandaVision, which... Well, yeah, the Disney series. I like um, Snow White. <laughs> I like Cinderella. I like, yeah, but you got to be careful uh, if you go on Google and download that shit. I'll tell you that. Um, the uh, <laughs> WandaVision, and this is once again, not that... The first three episodes were so weird, I was waiting as a... Oh God, this has to get better, and it did. Good payoff. Enjoyed the series. Um, Falcon Winter Soldier. I put it this way: if they'd actually just done it instead of six hours and put it in, it'd been a good movie. If you got it down two hours, there there was just a lot of peripheral stuff that um. It was more than two hours long. Well, it was an hour for six weeks. Oh, now, if you want to talk about, if you want to lot. talk more than two hours long, that was Avengers and uh, uh, Endgame. That's what was like when I took my dad to see Lord of the Rings in the movie theater, and he was like, "How long is does this keep going?" <laughs> That's because gentlemen our age <laughs> are not used to sitting through anything that long. The um, now, okay, here's my critique. And, any, and this is not a spoiler if you've not watched it, but it will, the people who have watched it, the most unbelievable part of that movie, the movie, that series, and I think it was episode five. Yes. Falcon gives a speech to a bunch of politicians, okay? Telling them how they're doing things wrong and they shouldn't be doing this. They should listen to the people. And they stood there for five minutes letting him talk down to them. No way in hell you can get five politicians to shut up that long to listen to anything. <laughs> so that's, that's, I'm and see, it's kidding. funny. And I was telling you, I said, now I can, I can believe a man can fly. I have no problem suspending disbelief for all this superhero stuff. But when I saw those politicians Standing there, you knew it was and I said, just wrong. "Lazy writing." That was lazy writing. That's what that was. <laughs> I hear you. I can watch scary movies all, all day long, but when I'm watching James Bond movies, I'm like, "That would never happen. <laughs> would never happen in real life." So anyway, uh, we're at nine fifty nine, which means we made it through the show. Um, I don't know. Uh, we, I haven't heard when we're going to be announcing more speakers, but like I said, I've already spoken. Believe it or not, people, I spoke to an actual TV agent tonight, and she assured me that I will have announcements for the Paranormal fans next Friday. Uh, told me I could have done them tonight, but something wouldn't work. Something wouldn't work out, and then guess who gets blamed? So... Want it on paper. Everybody, 
So this has been Scarefest TV. I hope you enjoyed tonight's little foray into BS. And um, and hopefully uh, it's supposed to rain two days this week. Maybe I can actually work on the show and uh, uh, get back with some of these celebrities. But um, Yeah, we need Tony Pye. Yeah, I got to talk to his agent. I never did hear how that worked out. Who no showed us. Yeah, I gotta I gotta get back with Tony, uh, which his agent because <laughs> Tony doesn't know me from a hole in the wall. You know, I'm just some dude. But so excited, Bruce Campbell. And I, kudos, by the way, if she's still in the chat room, kudos to Nicole Griffith, who actually put their. I I didn't see an answer, but I actually asked their agent, his agent, if he would come on the show. He may, like he oh. may say hell to the no. But the effort was put out. Thank you, Nicole Griffith. Everybody, this has been Scarefest TV. We'll be back next week. Good night.